what's going on what is going on what is going on party people i am back and late better than ever <laughs> my bad on this i had a it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if one day in one week one day out of the week or so that i have technical issues so i am uh sorry about that but we're here better late than ever i got my boy uh coach lee brown I'm Lee, Lee Brown. That's my cousin. But Lee Parks from Christian Brothers University here in Memphis. Um, great academic. What's up, Arthur? Um, we are uh, a little late, but coach has agreed to come on. Again, it's always appreciated that a great coach like, you know, yourself gets to come on and explain your school in front of parents from, from all over, man. And I appreciate it. And I know that the parents listening would also appreciate it. And so without further ado, coach, um, they'll be streaming in and Sadiq, what's up? Mr. Perillo, what's up? Um, they're streaming in now. They're probably like, what the hell is it taking so long? But we're here. <laughs> all right. We're here, ready to go. So, Coach Parks, if you could, can you just kind of give a little background about yourself? Um, you know, from your playing days all the way up to your coaching days, and how'd you get to Christian Brothers University? Well, first of all, D, thanks for having me on. We like we talked before we're recording anytime. Anytime I can get CBU out in front of everybody, um, out in front of a national audience like this will be, um, it, it's always a benefit for us. So thank you for providing this platform and giving me the chance to talk about CBU and Division II um, and, and the opportunities that we have. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. I, I grew up in Virginia, uh, very southeastern part. I was one of those baseball where I, I – I tell my guys, I feel like I'm part of the generation that started the, the specialization, you know, whether you think it's good or bad, I feel like my age group was kind of part of that. So, um, you know, with that, I ended up playing at Mississippi State and uh, loved my time there. It's one of those things where uh, I feel like I can provide some guidance on players. Um, felt like I was, I was talented coming out of high school. And then when I got to the SEC, it was a different ball game. So, you know, loved my time there, met my wife there. Um, didn't play as much as I had hoped to, but I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. Um, you know, a after that ended up uh, scouting a little bit for the Texas Rangers, then ended up taking a, uh, taking a job as an assistant at St. Leo University, another division two school down in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, just north of Tampa, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, mm -hmm. when we get into the recruiting part. But um, six years down there, loved it, got experience with a lot of different things and uh, worked my way up to recruiting coordinator. Um, opportunity came open at University of Memphis. After that, I, I was at Memphis for two years, um, infield coach and helped with hitters over there. And then the head job opened up here at CBU and um, jumped on the opportunity to be a head coach. So I, I'm excited about it. I'm in, in year number three now and really starting to see um, it's, it's been exciting to see how recruiting starting to take hold, how the culture starting to change. And uh, we just finished up exit meetings, had, had one of the guys say, you know what, coach, we had this culture, we have fun busting our ass and getting better. Nice. And I, I loved that answer. I loved mm -hmm. how that came out. So, you know, you look at wins and losses at where we're at now, and that's just going to take some time. But the way the culture's changed and the way these guys are working, uh, I'm excited about our future. Awesome, man. Uh, let me start by saying what's up, Mr. Perillo. Latoria, what's up? Lance, what's up? All right. We got uh, people who chiming in. Bubba, what's up, big dog? From Alabama, all right. Yeah, I got my boy, big. Got a big boy over there, eighth grader. Looks like his future stud, maybe. But anyway, <laughs> um, just the size alone, right? So, but anyway, yeah. Man. So I want to kind of get into these questions and parents, like always. Um, if you have questions, please, you know, what I'm saying, jot them down for Coach, and he'll do a little Q and A at the end. And um, I'll uh, make sure that. Uh, what's up, Jake? What's going on, Tracy? What's up? And uh, I'll make sure to get them across uh, to coach, okay? So first question I got uh, real, real quick, 
is the difference, you know, coach, between a division one, let's start with like actual school wise, you know, not just player wise, but school wise. What's the difference between a D1 school and a D2 school? Well, a- academically, I don't think there's much of a difference. Um, you look up and down the board and, you know, you have division one schools around the country that have, they'll have enrollment of, you know, 1500. Um, our enrollment here, I- including some of the, some of the grad school is 1800. Our, our undergrad is about 15 and change, um, 1500 and change. So, you know, you look at that and pretty similar. Then you look on the high side and you have Nova Southeastern um, down, down in Fort Lauderdale that I believe they're in the, you know, 20 some thousand range. So larger school. And, and of course you look at, you look at like UCF, I believe they're 60,000 or so. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't see any, I don't know of any D2s that are 60,000, but um you know, the, the enrollments are kind of all over the place when you, when you look at it. The biggest difference that I see, um, having, uh, I, I'm two years in Division One experience and uh, eight, really nine years of Division Two. biggest difference I see is, is really the, the depth. Um, you look at scholarships that are available for the NCAA for division one, it's 11.7 is the max. Mm-hmm. And the max for division two is nine. So that, that number right there is really going to affect your depth. And from a player standpoint, I look at that as a benefit because there's going to be, uh, I know most players aren't, aren't shied off by competition, but with less scholarship available, there's likely to be less competition in front of you for a spot. So there's a, between the, the less competition and then when you look at it, when a division two, when a division two coach offers you a scholarship, the percentage is much heavier out of nine than it is out of 11. So he really feels like, you're going to come in and you're going to impact his program right away. Because I'll tell you that I, it's difficult for me to offer a scholarship to a kid that I don't see affecting our program in the next two, three years. You know, it's, it's one of those when I offer a kid, uh, I want him to be able to come in and, and, and affect our talent level right away um, just because of the way the money's allocated. So yeah. that's, you know, I, I tell kids all the time, it's, it's not a quality of player thing. High end players in division two, they're going to get, they're going to get recognized. They're going to get, um, scouts are going to see them. We, we play in what I would call, I call it the Southeastern conference of division two, um, the Gulf South conference. And we had four guys drafted out of this conference last year. So if you're the caliber of player that can play professional baseball, you're going to get seen. But it's a matter of you have to be at a place where you're playing every day, where you're going to get seen playing and where scouts are going to see you play. Scouts aren't going to – they're not going to be able to write up a report on a guy that's – you know, sitting the bench and as a maybe a pinch runner, late in. Late in. Or, or, you know, I, that's that's my recommendation to kids is go where you're going to play, um, especially if you want to if you want to pursue professional baseball. Hey, that's uh, that's been a consensus. I think um, you know, just based off of the conversation we had before going on and. You know, I, I've, you know, I, I kind of get consistent, you know, listeners in, and I want to say, you know, basically, what's up, Pierre? What's up, D Brooks? What's up, Bruce? What's up? Uh, them the new guys that just joined in, but you know, some of my guys are kind of, you know, everyday listeners, so they've heard the conversation from the D1 coaches how cutthroat, you know, everything is, and mm-hmm. and I'm sure a school like you benefits from 
you know, guys that, you know, think, hey, I'm D1 and all that, and circumstances happen where they – the scholarships gets taken from them and now they left and they cannot play at another D1 school. So, you know, has this happened to you where you've kind of collected a kid or two that, you know, was a D1 kid and, you know, kind of basically got released from his, his scholarship and you were able to capitalize on it, you know? It does happen. And that's um, the way, the way a lot of division one and really the power fives are starting to over recruit they're bringing in more kids than the NCAA allows to stay on roster. Um, Division one roster limits 35 and 27 of those uh, have to be on scholarship of a minimum of a quarter. So outside of that 35, if you don't make that 35, um, you're likely not going to, not going to be a part of that program anymore. And the way the transfer rules are with Division II, um, if you transfer from Division I to Division II, you're immediately eligible, you know, pending some academic things. But that, that's more so you're in, academic, in good academic standing with the school that you left from. But um, that, that's really where and, – and, and we're, we're not so much D1 transfer-oriented – mainly because of our academic, um, the, the strength of, uh, of our academic programs. Um, uh, because of our academics, a lot of classes at a, at a bunch of different schools maybe won't transfer. Um, but there are a good number of Division II schools out there that they'll hold money back expecting kids to fall off from that Division I roster. Um, to where the division two guys can kind of swoop in here this time of year and, and grab a really solid player. Um, so the, I know there's talk among the NCAA with, with changing some transfer rules, but the way the environment is now, the, you know, the, some, some division twos can really take advantage of, of those roster limits with division one and kids that are falling or, Kids that are deciding to leave that Division One, that's you know their options are go Division Two, they can go junior college. There's NAI, there's Division Three. Bottom line, I think guys need to go where they can play and where they can be seen. Um, you know, pending they want to pursue professional baseball. That's that's my yeah. I'm all about playing, man. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what? Let me ask you this off the cuff, like you know. So what is your, you know, I know certain schools are like heavy, hey, we wait for junior college or, you know, your heavy, you know, high school, you know, particular area. So what is like, what when it comes to recruiting, what is your, you know, you, you know, your model, your philosophy when it comes right. to. We, we've been very high school heavy um, since I got in my first full recruiting class, 16 of the 18 guys were, were high school fre- or were, were freshmen. Um, you know, coming straight out of high school. We had two junior college uh, transfers in that class. But uh, my the way I, I've looked at building this program is with high school guys, getting them in here, having them for three, four, five years, depending on, you know, draft status and that kind of stuff, and really focus on player development. Um, it, it's, it's fun for me to to grab a kid that you know say off the mound he's 80 82 and you look at him a year later and and we have this in house we had a kid 80 82 and now he's 86 87 you know so when you really focus on the on the strength aspect of it on the maturity aspect um the, the development part is something that we really take uh, we really take serious. And, you know, uh, I think every school on the planet would say, yeah, they want a left-hander that's 90-92 with run. Um, I'd love to get that guy. But, you know, where our program is right now and still building, it, it's, it, it's more realistic for me to get the kid that's 80-82 and bust his tail in the weight room and really wants to focus on developing and getting better and – us as a coaching staff getting with him and, and, and really putting our head down and, and getting him better. 
And the way that group of, of freshmen in that first full class has developed, it's pretty exciting. Um, so I, I'm excited to see where this year's group is and, and going forward because that player development aspect, now that that first class is now sophomores, once they become juniors, that's when it's really going to be fun to see where our juniors stack up against what's predominantly a junior league. Majority of teams in our conference are very junior college oriented. They're very division one transfer oriented. So they're getting guys with more experience. Our guys, by the time they get there, they're going to have, you know, seven, eight, maybe 900 at bats under their belt mm. and all at this level. So you're starting to see those guys adjust the speed of the game and really become the players that we thought they were going to be when we were recruiting them. Mm. What um so when it comes to recruiting, I know we're here in Memphis, but you know, how far is your net right now? Where 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 are you looking? You know, if I say, you know, your core group of kids outside of Memphis, you know, every coach has an area or two that they like outside of their like home base. And right. um, you know, do you have that coach? Yeah, with my experience recruiting the state of Florida, when I was at St. Leo, I, I established a good number of contacts, and it, it's it's been a mission of mine since moving to Memphis to to really maintain those relationships. And it, it's it, it's been beneficial. We have, I believe, six guys from the state of Florida on our roster. Um, ha, actually, have a have a Florida kid coming on campus on Monday. So it's it's one of those where, you know, we've been able to to work around a limited recruiting budget, um, still get down there and see quality players and, and and be able to to show the strength of our academic programs and where our athletic stuff's going. So, um, you know, Florida's been that's kind of been a focus. But since I've been here, we've brought in Arkansas, we have brought in California. We brought in North Carolina. So, you know, when you have East and West Coast covered, um, I guess you could say we're recruiting a, on a national scale with a thousand dollar recruiting budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm about to say, that's, oh. also, that's also one of the differences, Division One, Division Two. I don't know how many D1 guys are working with a thousand dollar recruiting budget. Uh, now, I'm, I'm laughing, but is that true? That's how much the budget it, is? It is true. Yeah, it is true. And that that's that's actually after a, a $500 increase from last year. So what? we worked two years off of a $500 recruiting budget and, uh, and thankful for the school to up us to a thousand this year. Wow. <laughs> so you are, you, 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 every little last dollar you, you oh, working. No working. doubt. No doubt. I, I call it life in the deuce. <laughs> Dang, man. I thought you were joking, man. Oh no. <laughs> Ooh. I'll show uh, you my budget. <laughs> well, and I and I know the, um, I got a uh, so upcoming camps, right? And then uh, you know I want you to talk about your upcoming camps, and then I'm going to go through the list. I got a I got at least six plus, you know, what I'm saying uh, questions um, ranging from Texas to Philly, but I got uh, what is you know have you ever like basically right on the spot at these camps have you ever like you know made an offer to a kid right there off in, in the camps oh yeah yeah we have um we have an infielder uh right now that i actually all he's actually a florida kid that came up to our camp um wanted to major in engineering which was cbu our our biggest majors are science engineering and then business probably number three um, but he wanted engineering, was interested in the school. Um, that actually, because of the, because of our budget and stuff, we, I like to do kind of a FaceTime tour of campus just to give them an idea of what we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, he came up to camp, thought it was a great fit and offered him a scholarship there. Now the NCAA has, have, they've changed rules where you're not supposed to do that anymore. So that'll change the recruiting environment a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we, our camps are a huge recruiting tool for us. 
So it, it's one of those things where kids are able to, to come to camp. They're able to get a feel for our coaching staff and what we're like, kind of our style, our mentality. Um, they're able to more or less be a member of the program for a day and see if it's a fit for them too. Um, so the, our, our camps, they're usually around 20 to 20 to 30 guys. So it's, I usually know everybody's name by the end of the day, but camps are, they're huge for us. It's a huge recruiting tool, able to evaluate a kid, show them around campus. And then if it's a good fit, you know, hopefully, hopefully offer right there. Nice. Nice. Well, that's what they want to hear. And yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna start with the with the questions from from the parents, Coach. All okay. right, I got a uh, author from Memphis. He asks, um, do you keep a close eye to any particular local high schools in the area, or are private schools a first, you know, first school that you'll look at? No, it, it doesn't matter, private or public. I, I'm looking for um, I'm looking for guys that can help us win. You know the a dynamic with us being a private school um, and, and because of our academic requirements, it's, it's really based on, do you have the grades? Do you have the ACT scores to get in? And, and then, you know, it, it, the school does a good job of, of putting together financial packages. So I, I feel like when people look at CBU on the surface, they see a price tag of $43,000 a year. Um, when you start factoring in, okay, if you're an academic, if you're a high academic student coming out of high school, you're going to get, say, for example, 15 knocked off. And then you're another, you know, then baseball money comes into play based on what type of player you are. Um, then we, we accept Tennessee hope. So there's another 3,500. So you start chipping away at that 43,000. Um, but it, it, we don't really hone in on a particular school. I, I will say that for instance, I, I got a, I got an email from a high school coach today saying, Hey coach, these two, I have two players that have really made a jump from the summer just in their development and their, their work in the weight room you probably ought to come see them. And, and that still weighs pretty high for me because that, that's another one of the differences with, with Division II, our recruiting calendar is a little bit later. You know, we, this year we, we've signed one guy in this early period, early signing period so far. Still have some offers out to some others, but, you know, total, total in this class, I'm looking at probably eight guys eight, maybe nine guys in this class. So we still have a lot of work to do. And a lot of that comes from help from high school coaches and travel ball coaches like yourself saying, hey, I got a guy that that I think can really help. Cool. All right. I'm going to ask, if I don't remember, I'm going to ask a little deeper for the Tennessee with the whole, pro, you know, the whole program. I'm a, I, I've heard that too and a few times and I know, you know, People from outside of Tennessee basically won't benefit from that, but I want to kind of get into that at the end. But I want to kind of get these questions in. All right, we got Bubba from Alabama, class of 2023. Uh, when does scholarship money? When does that money start to dry up? When you know, when class of 2023? Um, well, it, it you know, in class of 2023, I would say there are some division one schools out there that are offering that class right now where we are as a division two school recruiting wise. Um, I, I'm still gathering my 2023 follow list because we, we still have a good amount of work for, for 2019s. Um, you know, for a 2023 grad, I, I would say play as much as you can over the summer. Um, stay healthy, play as much as you can over the summer. And, you know, go to a couple schools camps, say that right now are very high on your list. If, if those schools continue to, to contact you in different ways, um, then that school could be an option. If they don't, then, you know, start branching out 
And because you have the amount of time that you do, start to see some different things and start to start to find out what you like, what you don't like. Do you like certain staffs? Do you like certain facilities? Do you like, um, do you like big school, small school? So check out your options. Don't rush into a decision or just because some of your friends are starting to make decisions at that age doesn't mean you need to also. Yeah, I, I hope Bubba been listening to all these other talking about these these freshmen and sophomores committing, and you know you just hope you finish the cross cross the finish line. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've learned a lot about them early commit. Yeah, and I, I tell young kids, don't panic. Keep 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 your head down. Keep your keep working hard. And uh, we're between myself and other coaches and recruiting coordinators. We're it's our job to come find the best players we can. That's right. All right. Well, I have next question again. Local guy Memphis again asks, um, does the fact that a kid graduating from CBHS Christian Brothers High School give him an advantage? Not necessarily. Um, actually, the, the university itself, I believe, still has a small scholarship in effect for graduates of a Catholic high school. Um, but there, there is no real preference for CBHS kids. Uh, you know, we're, we are joined in a way CBU and CBHS, um, in our history, but also we're two different institutions. And, you know, I have, I have a few kids from CBHS, um, but there's really no, I guess, I guess, huge benefit of coming to CBU from CBHS or for us recruiting a kid um, from CBHS. There, there's, that's really not going to come into play if I'm making a decision between two different players. All right. Uh, my boy Steve from Texas asks, what kind of facilities does the program offer? That, that's one thing where I'll be the first to say we're short in a lot of areas is, is facilities. Um, it, it's, it's one of those when I came over here and, and I'm in year number three, that's a focal point um, that we do need to get better. Uh, since being in here, we've, we did a full renovation of our infield. Um, dropped about sixty thousand dollars on redoing the infield and irrigation, and um, renovated our batting cage, rebuilt bullpens. But we still have a lot of areas where we need to get better: dugout, seating, press box. Grand press box is enclosed and, and is okay. But um, I'll be the first to say we're short facility-wise, and it's really a focus of mine. Um, and the athletic director and the university to 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 improve. Um, historically, CBU hasn't focused on athletics, and with the new AD with Brian Summers coming in, um, there's a different mentality. There's more of a focus on growing athletics and making making us more competitive. Okay, all right, uh, boy, Damon Brooks from Alabama asks. Coach, can you give a little insight to what play to player development means in your eyes? Um, in my eyes, it's maximizing God-given ability that the kid has. Um, and, and it's interesting where baseball is right now um, and, and how technology and analytics is starting to come into play. It's been a big, I would say, a daily conversation with my assistants of how can we get into this, get into the, you could say, tech revolution with baseball. Um, so we've committed, we're going to buy a Rapsodo unit for our pitching staff, um, and we're getting blast sensors for our hitters. So all in all, financially, I'd say we're going to end up spending about $6,000 total on that. Um, just to help with our player development side. Uh, player development to me, it, it involves everything. It, it's, it's weight room physically. It's 
um, off the field skills, it's communication skills. Um, this year we read the book Energy Bus and studied it as a team just in positive thinking and taking a different approach and a different outlook on life. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not just the baseball part. It's not just getting my swing better, making you a better hitter, uh, making you a better pitcher. It's up and down because bottom line, the majority of these guys aren't going to play professional baseball. Um, e even to the point of it, it and in the, in the three purposes of our program, First one's to, to make sure they get their degree. So we're gonna develop them academically, make sure they have those resources. Um, second purpose, develop them athletically. And, and that involves weight room, that involves coaching, um, that involved nutrition. This year we brought in a nutritionist. Uh, and the third purpose is develop life skills. Cause bottom line, most of these guys aren't gonna play major league baseball but let's have them prepared for life to be good, good husbands, good, um, good husbands, good dads, good, just good people in general in society. Awesome. All right. Well, boy, Steve, again, asked, you know, uh, Texas question. I'm meaning, do you go into Texas? Do you recruit in Texas? I have not gotten into Texas since being at CBU. Uh, I did recruit a couple Texas kids when I was at St. Leo, um, we did have, uh, when I was at Memphis, we had a Texas kid. Um, so it, it, it's an area where I'd like to get into, but with a thousand dollar recruiting budget, you got to pick and choose. <laughs> well, well, that's a plug. My boy, Steve over there, he an ex big league too. So he, I'm sure he got some players and that's the reason Steve, why I'm with you hit, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger pigeon, I got them all. I'll take info wherever you send it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he's asking. He's the same one that asks about the program, the your facilities and stuff. Right. So, all right, my boy, uh, Mark from Maryland asks, um, why is the budget so low? Why is the why is the uh, um, recruiting budget so low? Um, it, it's it's really a financial decision by the school, and, and I mentioned historically the school hasn't put a big emphasis on athletic success. It's been very academic focused. And now with the new AD coming in, he's starting to change mentality and, you know, resources are starting to, to increase. You know, you look at it, you can look at it this way. I just had a 100% increase in my recruiting budget. <laughs> You know, so there, there's, there's different ways to look at it in different perspectives. So, you know, it's, I, I signed up, I knew what it was when I signed up and I, I call me hard headed, but I still think we can win with, with limited resources, you know, mm -hmm. recruiting budgets low, but I can always fundraise for that. Um, the place where CBU really does well and really supports us is, is how, how they, how we're able to treat our student athletes. We we travel by bus prior to our new AD, prior to Brian, it used to be vans. So we're now in charter buses. Um, we're now one person per bed on the on the road, which I, I know I know even Division One schools are multiple people per bed. What? So, yep. So it, it's, it's perspective and, but the fact that we can feed and house these guys on the road very well, in my opinion, um, if we can feed them and house them like champions, I can expect them to play like champions. All right. <laughs> well, cool. Ooh, okay. Uh, the two, two bad thing, the two people in the bag, grown men. I don't know. Dude. Oh, I know. I know. And, and that's where I, I'll say we're, we're very lucky to be set up in a situation really where it's policy, where it's one person per bed. Mm. These day and times, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Pierre, Pierre said that, uh, if you need guys in Philly, he said, "I got a pipeline here, pipe pipeline of kids out here in Philly." If you, uh... Pierre, I, I love that idea. Like, <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm open for I'm open for nationwide, and uh, 
you know, with, with LaSalle, I believe LaSalle's up there in Pennsylvania. They're another partner, LaSalle in school. Right. I, I found out of, you know, I, I'm my boy over there, uh, Mike over at Christian Brothers High School, the AD, he kind of told me the whole umbrella thing with all the schools and stuff. Yeah. I mean, he told yeah. me, yeah, LaSalle. Yeah, it was, that was interesting. I didn't know all that. But um, anyway, um, what do kids, what do you do with kids that can't afford a camp or travel ball but can't flat out ball? You know what I'm saying? Basically, underprivileged yep. kids can just flat out ball. You know, what do you do with those type of kids? Yep. What I do is one of the benefits, and this is another difference between Division One and Division Two recruiting, Division Two schools are allowed to, to do workouts. Um, division one schools can. So division two guys and, and guys that uh, I'll do some, some due diligence. I'll call on a kid, talk to different coaches, talk to people that, that can vouch for his athletic ability and, and academics and what type of character he has. Um, if all of those match up and, you know, he's not able to get to a camp, We'll set up a workout. There's some paperwork involved just to stay compliant with the NCAA, but um, that's something I'm pretty good at is paperwork. So if it means getting a solid player into our program, I have no problem doing that. All right. Oh, my boy, Pierre, I heard that. All right. So my, my Jake down in Mississippi asks, uh, what do you look for in a prospect? What's, what's your ideal? What's a Christian Brothers player? Well, it, it – it's really sliding scale across the board. First off is I, I want a kid that, that can come in and help us win. You know, coaches, whether it's good or bad, coaches are usually judged on their win-loss record um, first, but uh, I need a kid that can come in and help us win. And that's not always on the field. If he's a kid and, and we have role guys up and down our, our roster, um, some of them that didn't even start on their high school team that, that came in and walked on and loved what we were doing here with the program and wanted to be a part. And one of them in particular, uh, I'd call a lefty specialist that he, he pitches under bat speed from the left side and gets the, gets the big donkey four hole hitter to roll over something to, to the shortstop third baseman. And, and that, you know, that to me is, is huge. And his ability to execute his role is, is a huge part of our, of our team. You know, I could sit here and say, I want to, I want a six, three, 220 pound right-handed hitter that can hit a ball 450 feet but realistically, I think that guy's going to end up at end up at Memphis, Ole Miss, Pro Ball. You know, I, I don't I don't know if I'd get him here. Mm. But kids that are going to come in and bust their butt and focus on our our, our big mantra is one percent better each day, and, and let compound effects really take hold to where you're a much different player your last day, your senior year, than you were the first day you stepped on campus. Mm. I got uh, – next one would be – if you're into analytics, is there a budget for technology? Uh, there's not a budget, but I did fundraise for it. <laughs> um so there, there's not a specific line item for technology, but it's an area where I, I've, I've allocated um, some of our fundraising money, mainly from hosting games this summer and, and, and for our, some of our corporate partners um, that, that buy fence signs and some other sponsor packages. But that's where I'm allocating that money to. Okay. I'm a... Uh... I got yeah, Steve. I didn't you know I didn't go to school, so they asked me questions. I was like, yeah, I didn't, you know. This <laughs> I guess he was talking about Christian brothers. Is it a Jesuit school? I don't, I don't know. Uh, we're a Catholic institution. You don't have to be Catholic to attend. Uh, I I want to say numbers wise, I believe twenty. I think it's twenty three percent of campus is actually Catholic. 
Um, so it's a very diverse campus, um, you know, race, religion, up and down the board, nationality. Uh, don't, don't quote me on some numbers just from different, different countries that are, that are represented here, but uh, it, it's pretty diverse across the board. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, I got Mark, I guess he's late to the thing. He asked what do colleges look for in a player during recruiting? Yeah, it's, it's really that whole, are you going to help a team win and wh whether it's on the field, whether it's on a roll. Um, and, and my, my biggest recommendation to players and really to parents also going through the recruiting process is go watch a division two school play, go watch a division three school play, go watch a junior college play, um, go watch a division one school play and, and then be realistic in your skills and your self evaluation of, okay, where's my best, where's my best opportunity to play at the highest level possible. Mm. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, I got Bubba asks, what pitching programs do you like? Drive, drive line, et cetera, stuff like that? Yeah, we, um, we, we have drive line implemented, uh, mainly the heavy ball aspect of it. And that's something that uh, we're going on year number two with. So love the drive line program, knock on wood. It's, uh, it's, started to, or it's minimized um, arm injuries and really maximized arm health, I'd say. Uh, I don't have any numbers or statistics to back it up, but I feel like um, just general arm soreness and guys not feeling good, I think since we've started that program has really, has really gone down. So the heavy ball stuff, I'm – I'm a supporter of. I think it's. I think it's great. And the the line that really convinced me is when you put something heavier into your hand, your body's going to naturally make an adjustment to be more efficient. And when I read that in the driveline program and the research that I was doing on it, um, that that statement right there really really convinced me that that that, that was something I wanted to implement our program I got um, uh, next question will be I had a I had a comment and I know you would like let me see um, I guess that's all the questions coach but I do have from Cody Thochain and he says the uh, up in Millington I don't know who he is. He just said, <laughs> I got to hear this comment. He said the D, the D2 legend known as Lee Parks, hashtag live in the deuce. That's what Life in the deuce oh, right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody does a great job up there in Millington, and uh, we're, we're grateful. They're actually hosting a couple games for us up there. So plug to Cody. Great work up there, and look forward to seeing you, dude. Okay. And uh, Mark? Mark asks again, you know, uh, Mark, yes. Um, I think Mark is a youngster and uh, he wants to ask, uh, yes, he wants to, you know, he asks, do you have to attend camps to get on the, attend your camps to get on the radar? Mark yeah, wants to ask. It's not necessary. The, you know, we spend, we hosted 55 games on our field this past summer. So that's a huge recruiting tool for us. Um, uh, I'm, I'm constantly out on the road looking at or watching different tournaments and evaluating players. So no, it, it I would say off of our roster, I, I want to say it's seven or eight guys actually came to our camp. Um, so no, it's not necessary. It's not, it's not mandatory, but, uh, it does help. Mm-hmm. All right, man. So, all right, coach, that's, uh, that's all the time that we have. Can you end with the, you know, for the few Tennessee, uh, uh, parents and stuff that's here. Can you, can you, and I want to know this too, cause I don't know. I've heard this. Can we do the, uh, uh, 
the um, hope, you know, the Tennessee game. hope. Yeah, um, it, yeah, I should know for sure the the requirements to to receive hope. But what hope is is it's a it's a state supported, um, I, I believe it's lottery supported actually. But uh, it's a state program where if you re if you hold a certain GPA out of high school and you do a certain amount of community service hours, you qualify for a $3,500 grant through the state. And basically it's like free money for doing well in school. You don't have to pay it back. Um, so that's another one of those check marks as, as you're you know, knocking off, the, in our example, knocking off from $43,000 to me, it's kind of like free money for, for doing well in school and helping support your community. So I, I think it's a great program. There was something similar to that down in Florida. Uh, I don't believe Mississippi has a, a lottery scholarship like that, but for, for Mississippi students and for Arkansas students, CBU actually um, does a scholarship for those for those two states to kind of mirror the Tennessee type setup, so that that's just another added thing that CBU does to to put together packages and make it make it feasible financially. Because um, I'll be the first to say forty three thousand dollars is a lot of money, um, and then you then you multiply that times four, so you're looking at that for a private school education. Um, but the return is also huge. You, you get a top line, top line education. And when you start looking at, at, uh, starting salaries for a lot of our graduates, um, that, that upfront cost pays off in the end. Mm, okay. That's uh that's good. News. I didn't, you know, I heard it, but I'm glad you explained it because yeah. I just heard yeah, about it's, uh, it. It's, it's a really good program and, and you know, it's something that parents need to know about and something that they can research. So they, if they just Google Tennessee Hope, um, I would bet the requirements are going to come into play. So, and, and it's very, like, it's, it's reachable. It's not outlandish expectations for a, you know, to have a 4-1 GPA. I, I want to say it's in that 3-2 three, three to 3-5 three range. You know, don't quote me on it, but it, it's, they're very reachable um, levels, ACT, GPA, and, and number of community service hours. All right. Um, that's cool. So uh, that's what I'll do, uh, Coach. Um, I appreciate your time. Again, this is uh, this has been another, you know, helpful. I know, you know, all the questions and that you asked and, I mean, answered and, you know, from all oh, you heard from Philly, you heard from Texas, Alabama, you know, uh, uh, coast to coast, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and this is what I'll do, Coach. I'm mean, they all they're kind of all tailing off right now towards the end, but you know, we were supposed to come last, you know, this past fall. Weather issues yeah. has messed this up, but for the people that are still listening, if you are ninth grade on up, all right, I'm just thinking about this out loud. Um, I know this is a lot of interest and questions coming up. Um, I of course, you know, the fact that you know, coaches right here in Memphis. If you're interested, and I'm sure we'll be, we continue to be in contact with each other, but um, if you are from outside of the area, outside of Memphis, and you're looking to go to these type of camps and have workouts, you know, in front of, you know, Coach Parks, anything like that, just hit me up. Um, we were able to schedule something this fall, but, you know, due to the weather, um, you know, we, we couldn't do it. But the fact that he's here, he's talking live in person, and I know he's always looking for talent. Hit me up, private message me, and I'll, you know, I'll be marketing that, you know, it's a long time away. But, you know, again, this is a great opportunity. I appreciate you guys coming on board. Um, coach, again, camps, next time, when is your next camps coming? Uh, the date has not been set, but our next camp is usually in May. Um, but we'll get all that info out on our website and make sure that we get it out to everybody um, as much as possible. And D will make sure we get you the info too, because it right. is, it's a huge recruiting tool for our program. All right, cool. All right, coach. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys. So we have, 
Monday, we got LSU, Eunice, uh, hitting coach coming on, my boy Roberto Vaz. I also got some line pro scout uh, from the A's, trying to lock him in over the weekend. He'll be coming on board. And I got a couple of coaches surprises next week. And, of course, you know, so tomorrow you're probably going to just get me. I know. Uh, bleh. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it goes from, like, here, yeah, coaches, and then it, when it comes to me, coaches, like, oh, man, you know, just D today. You know what I'm saying? But – I'm happy to put guys like yourself on there, man, and and they love it, man. So um, they all saying thanks to you, coach. They're they're all saying appreciate you and um, thanks for y'all's time. Appreciate you listening, and uh, hopefully I gave some information that's useful. But D, I appreciate you having having me on, and this was awesome. Ho- hope to do it again in the future. Oh, thanks, coach, and I see you guys tomorrow, three o'clock. Take care. See you, D. See you later.